person I thanked in my first book besides my family is Travis who came to me twice in the angel round if I put 50k in it would have been three four five hundred million huge miss um, I was I mean I was very early Bitcoin and ethereum but I didn't play you know um, uh, Airbnb when it was air bed and breakfast sent me an email that I never answered it was literally Joe at airbedandbreakfast.com. Not even shortened yet. Yeah. Missed that. Yes. I mean, there's a, hold on, there's some really good ones. Um, God, I feel like there's one or two like real monsters. Well, uh, the Netflix one's a funny story. Dustin just brought up in the background. I have this great story where I called, I was on vacation kind of analyzing. I was like, Netflix is about to go. It's like eight, nine years ago. And I called to buy it with my broker. And the... They're cheering for the devastating mistake I made. <laughs> I called and said, I was going to write a pretty big check, especially because I don't tend to buy stock. And I, um... The phone gets cut off with bad service. I call him back, and I'm continuing. And it gets cut off again. And I call back again, and I can't get him. And I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll email him when I get back to the States. I never do it. It was a hefty check. Call it seven-figure investment. That would have, like, 30x. It was a bit. Yeah. So that's an over-the-counter kind of stock one. Um, there's so many. That, that's the coolest part. There's so many. I think the greatest thing I can say to everybody right now is when I see I am me, I am a purebred entrepreneur. And a purebred entrepreneur, she or he, is making way more mistakes than they're making good decisions. It's the nature of the game. I think it's like baseball. If you go three for 10, you go in the Hall of Fame. I think that's entrepreneurship. If you go three for 10, because most people go over 50. That's what people don't know about this game. Most people go over 50. If you go three for 10, you're in the Hall of Fame, and I think I'm, I'm an example of that. The question I always ask is, when it's all said and done, life is over. I'll get tons of fans, followers, yep. et cetera. What would be maybe one word or a phrase, I don't care, of what you would want people to remember you by? Like, when Gary has gone, remember him as this. He gave, he gave more than he took. Gave more than he took? Why do you, why do you say that? Well, because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a builder, I'm gathering wealth, I'm ga gathering awareness, I'm gathering admiration, and so I'm a gatherer, I'm a builder, and so the reason I say he gave more than he took is I'm taking a lot, yeah. you know, but I'm obsessed with the give back, you know, behind the scenes, the game that I spit for free on social, I'm proud of that. I identify as that. I like being the older brother in my family. I like being the go-to in every circle I'm in, emotionally, financially, emotionally again, financially again. I'm that guy, and I'm proud of that. It comes with, it comes with some loneliness. It comes with some resentment. It comes with its baggage, but I need to be accountable to that. I've made this bed, and I'm proud to sleep in it. I love that. Uh, obviously, all kinds of great content, great stuff, but one thing that I'm addicted to is the vision of the Jets. And, and the, it's not just the vision of the Jets, it's the, it's the sweater. Yeah, the sweater. I, I saw you frame it. Yeah. And I really like yeah. open, but like, dude, I yeah. saw that, it was like, shit, dude. It's, it's like, big. It's, it's so big, wild. man, because, you know, I think people forget where they come from. I don't think people understand that they can do it. Yeah. Like, 
I, 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 I don't think people understand that money is not happiness. Like, I think there's a lot of things the world's confused about. I think the world is confused. I think the world, the world is very good at selling fear. It's selling envy. It's selling jealousy. It's selling capitalistic items. It's selling a lot of stuff that's not right. And I'm very, very conscious of that. And I'm, I'm focused on selling the right thing. This whole thing, I was tracing it back, this whole thing inspired this monthly event. It, all, it actually all started uh, in your office in New York City. No way. And I went to my team and said, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. Like, hit them up and see if there's a way. And we did do a podcast with Gary Vee. Let's just start at the top. Like, back, we do it. Yep. Do it backwards. And uh, my team called it your team, and they came back with a big no. They're like, <laughs> no. And, my, and I, I said, well, like, could we just like, offer money? Like, yeah. So they went back. And it was like, no, he doesn't make money. Shit. And what happened was, you made a tweet. You made a tweet that said, uh, I'm launching a book. No. Uh, Sneakers? Wine. Wine. Empathy wine. Empathy wine. I remember now. Empathy wines, bro. And it was not. My, my favorite thing is, like, living back in my old days. Like, if I have an agenda, be friends, sneakers, a book, yeah. empathy wine. I'm always like, man, people are offering me money all the time for access. It's the number one value. Let me discount that heavily and attach it to, I feel weird about the money, right? Like, I'm not gonna do that, but hey, if you're gonna buy wine anyway, buy my wine, and I'm gonna give you the thing you actually want, and it's been my favorite story through the years on sneakers, books, meet friends, and empathy, yeah. that how things like that have picked off. So you found the moment. That was it. I, I remember that podcast. Yes. Long story short, what happened was I started just posting it, and then everybody else wanted to be on the show. And so all these business owners yeah. started to come in, and I created it. Yeah. And they started. That that book came. That was a spark. The spark of all the shit was because of the. Uh, uh, I love that. And I did it in place, and we did the why, and uh, it was cool. Dude. That's cool, bro. That's cool, bro. Hello, hello, how are we today? Good afternoon, good morning. If you're on the West Coast, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and comment where you're coming in from as you start joining the live stream. And my name is Jeff Finnington, as many of you know. Uh, I'm here with the amazing Joe jo Benora of Benora Custom Home and Lynn Hurley, the sales and marketing director for Benora Custom Home. And we're gonna to talk today about new construction, the custom home building process, and what a lot of builders and a lot of uh, people in the industry may not share with you, the pitfalls and mistakes that you need to avoid, um, because it's important, especially nowadays. There's a lot of moving pieces, and having the right team in place, as I'll tell you, is extremely important. So, if you are out there and you're considering building a custom home, or you are thinking about purchasing a new construction project, or just kind of feeling out how that process would go. Maybe you have a plan for your great home. You're, you're envisioning this beautiful property that one day you're going to build on. These are amazing tips and things that you need to know when looking into that process. And so I am with today the best of the best. They are absolutely amazing. I chose them for a reason. Ray and I chose them for a reason to have on this live with you today to share the information. And I'm, I have some prepared questions that I'm going to be asking them, but also we may just go off the cuff, back and forth. They know what they're talking about. So if you see me look down at my phone, that's why, because I have some questions I want to make sure that I get to make sure that we get you all of the information. But these are amazing, huge mistakes that you're going to want to learn about that a lot of people make that could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars if you avoid them. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're here in the Anamore model of Pelican Bay Maples. Absolutely beautiful. Sitting in front of a custom wine room that won the Dan Dollar Award recently. That's very exciting. And I, I obviously know your background, but they don't. So, Joe, why don't you start? Would you share a little bit about who you are and what you've done uh, in your book? Sure, sure. So, uh, my name is Joe Lenore Jr. I've uh, been in construction 
most of my life. Um, my parents started the hospitality industry. I grew up working in their businesses. We built all of our own restaurants and beer facilities. I've done so commercial construction um, across the board from a small restaurant to hotel, golf course, local type of construction, uh, conference centers, marina. In 2014, I transitioned into building residential. Um, so for the past, oh, this is about 10 years now, I've focused solely on building uh, residential projects. And I've built both in the Hudson Valley, New York, and now here in East Florida. Um, everything from 1,500 square foot, really cool boutique cottages, up to houses like this, which have you know, 10,000 square feet under the roof, and 6,900 square feet under air. I uh, love building. I think it's it's just it's an exciting, fun job for me. Um, and I don't like the job. It's, it's just it's what I enjoy. It's a passion I have for, for building new spaces for people to call home um, at various different price points and various different problems. That's amazing. And what I love, and Lynn, you mentioned this to me many times, is that you started in the hospitality industry. Mm -hmm. So how much of that do you think applies to what you do today? It's a great question. Um, yeah, I get that a lot. How do you go from working and building restaurants to building houses? Well, I think that applying the principles we learned in hospitality of taking care of your customers, really getting to know your customers, building your relationship, understanding what your needs are, right in the beginning translates into a successful building project. Um, you know, when we were designing custom events for people's weddings, it's one of the most important things in your life. And you have to really know your customer, know your product, and merge the two together. Um, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of upfront thinking. And also just making sure that the customer knows you have them at every step of the way. Um, you're there, you're going to get it done on time, on budget. You know, when we say we're having an event a certain day, you have to, it had to happen. There's no changing the day, it has to happen. So I approach a house product the same way. If I commit to something, I'm going to do it. And uh, that's, I guess, a, a lot of other hospitality is translated over to the yeah, absolutely. That's what we'll talk about why that's such a big deal. So I am in the I was here one week and I said, I And that is not uncommon. There are people who come to me and they say, I'm happy. And they really don't have a community that they know. They don't know who they come from. And so one of the things that you need to come to me from the first time that you come to me from the first time that you come to me from the first time that you come to me from the first time. My daughter, she was a realtor, and she had just started working, and she was working on her first new construction home. And I just fell in love with her. And we just love the whole planning. And she was a realtor, and she had just started working on her first new construction home. And I just fell in love with her. And we just love the whole planning. And she asked me to join her, and I did. And that was in 2014. And I have been working in new construction. What I love about these two is the you know that they started and very customer based, you know, customer service based industries and professions and translated that into this industry, which is, is rare. Yeah, it's, it's very rare. Um, so I love that job, both of you. And uh, by the way, if you know someone who is going to be doing double income, and it may not be in this world, it may just come out of some country, but specifically for that, make sure you share this with them because they're going to get a really great success now. So, speaking of that, um, what are three, three to four mistakes that you see? Uh, people make for children's make in the top of the house. Specifically with custom pets, because I know, as you were talking about earlier, there's a lot of custom handovers that really don't need to be. Sure. There's, you know, small things 
um, I think both are equally important to commit something small and become something large or not. Okay. Um, I'll start with you the start one that the the start the 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 building starts small. Getting the right team in place off the get go is, is, no, is the number one important thing. But the lack of building, like many doubles, isn't just a picture of the builder. It's a user interior designer, a user interior designer, a user interior designer, a user interior designer. What would you say the first thing is? He says, well, I'll do all that stuff later. Ah, that's that's the thing. So doing all that stuff later means you're going to be either limited or spending a bunch of money on changes. Because there are things that you need to know up front. Like where is this color going? Like where is this light going? How are you going to do it? Where is it going to work based on your landscape? You can't just design a house in white box and think that it's going to work. Because it's really starting to do it. And we were talking about this earlier. This is a house project that I have now. Where I have a very successful with a building permit, supposedly already built. And I start digging into the details. I realize the structure is a very good one. Designer, we didn't talk to the subject designer, we didn't talk to the homeowner. None of the work is permitted. Now he says you can go build it. You can't. That's so crazy. Well, if you go, if you go build it, it's just it's not going to work. You know, the house on one plan shows one elevation, the other plan shows another elevation. They clearly get the keys to the house. And now, you know, your arm is around the whole process. And you really need to be able to do so and bring your whole team together. Stop the whole thing that you're trying to do. So, I should be able to work. I should be able to work. I should be able to work. Oh, 
with it. If I were a girl, Beyonce so telling Jay Z that she doesn't want to drink anything while she's getting announced, and he shrugs her off because he didn't. Like she said, it really is. Yes, it can be a very stressful time in your life. But I always say, still for you. She fucking takes you. I need time. I need space. I'm not sure that they understand what you're doing. I'm not even fucking a player. I'm not even 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 a player
We had our builder look at it. He took one look at it. It took him two minutes to look at that plan. And my husband would deal with you. It's straight like this. It's straight like this. This won't work. And he just played me. And we got a grouchy in her head in the back. Ain't never been scared of me. Man, whatever. You love on me right now? It was a two-story house. It was a two-story house. There was not you know, enough room to put that in the Back to the architect, back to the interior design, and all of that happening. All of it still is fake. And like I said, when I started this story, it's, it's, it's a sad story. He died before he ever got it. So, what I'm hearing from both of you is that you're getting into the building of all this security. No, but you won't make it get gone. And I know we And I was blown away by the things that I that I didn't see because of your eye and that I really never thought of. And so it's so helpful to have that involvement. Yeah. And my husband will deal with you. It's straight like this. It's like that. Yeah, it's a fun process. Like, it's not serious. It's a lot of fun. You want to die. It's a lot of fun. You want to die. Man, what is it? You go on there right now? He got all these dresses on. Small crocs. He probably free balling these with like somebody slept with a car. This dingy black shirt that he wear a bang his arms. And his chain fake. It's okay because he's still got the He's got the little bang chain. It's okay because he's still got the little bang chain. It's okay because he's still got the little bang chain. It's okay because he's still got the little bang chain. Is that not only that, not only the property, but new construction, depending on the area, but if you're in the area, can also provide you some initial equity versus just to the buying retail or buying itself. So it's a process, but at the end of the day, you have an asset forever if you choose to that you can create so many memories from. Um, yeah, well, I can speak a little bit to that. So, mm -hmm. in addition to being a builder, I'm a real estate developer. So I build, build spec homes. You know, a spec home is a home that's built in advance without a particular buyer in mind. But you, you build a very nice home and we're, we're in one mm -hmm. um, with the goal of, of making profit. So you have to make decisions, whether it's a spec home or it's your own home. If your goal is to build equity right off the bat, you have to make decisions that are going to impact that equity. You can overspend, in other words. If you overspend, you don't need to be confused because if you overspend on something, or whether it's the market or the street or the neighborhood, or you just decide you really want to have this $40,000 soaking cup, okay, <laughs> it's not going to add that much value to the house. Um, you may not end up with it. You may make some decisions that don't create that initial equity. However, if you listen to your building, listen to your realtor, listen to your professionals, you can end up with absolutely gorgeous, custom homes, and everything you want. Welcome to another episode uh, of Course Light Wraps. 95% of the things you want. Store, and then there's the light truck store. Let's see what she got. How do you think we're so well? Let's say you can't guard a parked car. This thing called market price. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I know her saying that she goes to say, you know, I don't know if she's at home, but I love working with people who want to do it. I love to be polite. I love to be involved in it. I love to be involved in it. And there are things like that when you walk into a home and it's completely everything is done. Um, but I also think if you want to do a custom home, there is a way to say that. You don't want to mess with it. Hey, you! Check out the Rebecca Zappa for more info on the Coors Light Fire North Program. Well, absolutely. And it's like, it's all, it all depends on how you get out of it. And some people just want to walk into everything done. And then there's a light truck stock. And it's a work. It's completely amazing. Oh, 
I just stepped up a little bit on these bags, and I came to love doing it. Hey, you, check out the Raptors out for more info on Coors Light, far more true than they. Welcome to another episode of Coors Light Raps Talk. Now, there's trash talk, and then there's polite trash talk. Let's see what you got. How do you think Marquise Noel would say, you can't guard a first card for like me? Yeah, you guys, go ahead and read it. You can step it up a little bit. How do you think Jalen McDaniels would say, do you want to 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 do you want to
and that uh, yeah. so November 30th from 5 to 7 is the in Southwest Florida East Bay Southwest. We're super excited to host this event. Joe's going to be sharing even more um, about the details of this home and showcasing any questions that you have if you have specific questions. So make sure to answer those at the event. So we appreciate your time. Appreciate your guys' time. We're going to show the more of the more at home. And again, if there's any questions you have, feel free to reach out to me and come to the show. And just to come on and if you want to see more of this beautiful home or other homes that go to them and the the and the NoraCustomHomes.com. And we'll type that in the chat as well. So have a great day, everyone, and we will be reaching out to you soon. Life's modernity has led us to an interesting paradox. We are more connected than ever, but we also tend to feel more alone. We are filled with commitments and tasks, yet often feel ignored or undervalued by those we consider important in the current world scenario. We all want to feel important to our close circle, but we often end up feeling ignored, as if we don't matter as much to them as they do to us. This is where Stoicism and philosophy come into play. Stoics teach us to find value within ourselves and not depend on constant recognition from others. But how can we apply these teachings in our daily lives to gain priority with those around us? In this video, we'll explore effective strategies aligned with Stoicism and philosophy to earn priority in others' lives or to determine if these people genuinely have an interest in us. It's not about strategies or manipulation tricks, but a wiser and more authentic approach to building genuine and high-value relationships. Ultimately, the people around you define who you are. As the famous saying goes, show me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. If you are not a priority to them, these people might be that genuine and authentic interest in you. In this ancient philosophy, we find principles for striking a balance between our needs and relationships. The essence lies in being valuable without being needed. The first step to earning priority in others' lives is to create a fear of loss. When you're always available, always responding immediately, people assume you'll be there at any time. In the modern, fast-paced world, time is a precious resource. And Stoicism teaches us to give it its due value. You must let people miss you, allow them to feel your absence occasionally. Stoics remind us that we can't control what happens around us, but we can control how we respond. By valuing your time and attention, you become someone who respects yourself, and others will start to see you as a valuable person because you choose to give them some of your precious time and attention. Don't be afraid to say no or not respond immediately to others' requests. Practice the art of patience, and let others value your time as much as you do. Patience is essential to earn priority in others' lives. Stoicism teaches us that patience is a valuable virtue in a world full of distractions and haste. Being able to wait calmly can set you apart and make you a valuable person. Patience doesn't mean passivity. It means maintaining control over your emotions and reactions. When you practice patience, you allow others to see your strength. You don't get carried away by haste or the emotions of the moment. You become like a lighthouse in the middle of the storm. Practicing patience lets others grow impatient, but you maintain your serenity. You'll see how people begin to appreciate your presence and control. So remember, priority begins with yourself. Don't seek constant approval and attention from others. Own your time and attention, and you'll see people start to value you more. Another crucial point to be more valued by others is to avoid always being available. If you're the type of person who always says yes to everything, your time loses value, and people may take your availability for granted. Stoics like Seneca teach us that we must own our time and decide wisely how we invest it. Learn to say no to others' requests respectfully. This doesn't mean you're a selfish person, but rather someone who values their own needs and priorities before committing to others. In the context of avoiding always being available, the following words of Epictetus take on profound meaning. No man is free who is not a master of himself. Epictetus reminds us that true freedom begins from within, with self-discipline and mastery over our own decisions. 
values. Stoicism values living in accordance with our principles and values. By avoiding always being available, you're showing that your time and energy are valuable, fostering greater respect. Consequently, others will prioritize you more. Continuing our quest to be more important and a priority for others, let's touch on the third point, maintaining mystery. We're often tempted to share everything about ourselves with others, sharing our emotions, thoughts and deepest desires immediately. However, this overexposure can diminish your importance to others. People tend to prioritize what they don't have or have little control over. Instead of revealing all the details of your life immediately, allow yourself to maintain an air of mystery. Make people want to know you better. Stoics teach us the importance of self-discipline and self-control. And maintaining a bit of mystery doesn't mean hiding who you are, but gradually revealing your true essence. If asked questions, answer vaguely. Avoid delving too deeply into your past, and don't reveal secrets or significant aspects of your life. This will keep others focused on you. Remember Seneca's famous phrase, fortune favors the bold. In this context, boldness lies in being aware of how much you share, and when you share it with others. Leaving space for mystery also encourages curiosity in people. When someone feels there's more to discover, they become more attracted to you. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what's within our control. Controlling how much you reveal about yourself is something within your control. It's not about hiding who you are, but about dosing it wisely. Remember that you don't need constant approval from others. Maintain some mystery and discover how people value you for who you are, not just for what you show. Now we come to the fourth crucial point in our journey to be more important and a priority for others. Let them invest in you. It's not about ego, but allowing others to feel valued by contributing to your life. An ancient stoic Seneca reminded us that men are delighted to be chosen for what enriches them. When you allow others to help you or show appreciation, you give them the opportunity to enrich their own lives. Let others feel appreciated and useful by allowing them to invest in your life. It could be as simple as accepting advice, assistance, or even a kind word. In stoicism, we understand that we are interdependent beings. We shouldn't fear asking for or accepting help when we need it. Doing so strengthens our bonds with others. Let's return to the core of Stoicism and talk about independence. An ancient Stoic, Epictetus, taught us, it is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Independence in Stoicism doesn't mean complete isolation from others, but rather autonomy and self-governance. It is the ability to make conscious decisions without overly relying on external approval or influence. By practicing independence, you become a guardian of your own ethics and values, making you more valuable to others as they respect you for your integrity. Independence also allows you to be more genuine in your relationships, not becoming a follower, but a companion contributing to the well-being of others. Independence in Stoicism involves self-discipline, self-awareness, and self-control, making you attractive to those who value strong and beautiful individuals. So, to be more valued by others, cultivate independence. It's not about closing yourself off from the world, but about being the captain of your own destiny and guiding others by your example. This approach fosters stronger relationships, making you more valuable in the lives of others. Generosity and openness to allowing others to invest in you will make you more attractive and respected. Remember, the true wealth of life lies in meaningful relationships and connections. By allowing others to invest in you, you create a virtuous circle of mutual value. The fifth point in our journey to be more important, and a priority for others, is prioritizing your needs. This is essential to learn how to be more valued by others. Often we end up sacrificing our own needs for the sake of others, leading to over-exploitation and lack of respect for your person. In today's society, there's often a promotion of the idea that we should always be available to everyone. However, this is not only unsustainable, but can also lead others to see you as an inexhaustible resource, draining your attention and valuable time. Stoic philosophy teaches us that we must take ownership of our own life and well-being. This involves establishing healthy boundaries and prioritizing our own needs before attending to others. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus expressed this profound idea. First, say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. This deep statement encapsulates one of Stoicism's fundamental principles, 
which has a significant impact on how we relate to ourselves and others. Epictetus urges us to engage in an act of self-affirmation and self-knowledge before undertaking any action in life. This self-affirmation involves recognizing our needs, desires and personal values, understanding that these must be fulfilled before we can be truly valuable to others. From a stoic perspective, this approach aligns with the idea that self-mastery and self-knowledge are the foundations for living a virtuous and meaningful life. To be truly valuable to others, we must first cultivate virtues within ourselves, such as authenticity, resilience, self-discipline and empathy. Before seeking external approval, we must seek approval from ourselves. This doesn't mean being egocentric or insensitive to others' needs, but rather building a solid foundation of self-knowledge and self-acceptance. When we are secure in our identity and goals, we project a confidence that naturally attracts people towards us. Stoicism teaches us to define our values, goals and virtues through introspection and self-evaluation. We can understand who we are and what we represent by doing so, establishing an internal compass that guides our actions and decisions. Epictetus's phrase also underscores the importance of action. Merely affirming ourselves in our intentions is not enough. We must back our words with consistent actions. When we act in accordance with our authentic identity, our actions reinforce our value, attracting those who respect consistency and integrity. Here we arrive at the sixth crucial point of this video. Don't make others the center of your life. In today's society, we often fall into the trap of placing others on a pedestal, losing our own direction. Don't make others the center of your life. Don't always be available. Value your time and attention, and you'll see how this makes you more valuable to others. We've turned social media and others' approval into a constant search for validation and happiness, distancing ourselves from our authenticity and becoming puppets controlled by others' opinions, allowing them to dictate our actions. Stoicism teaches us to be the center of our own universe, to prioritize our passions and goals. By doing so, we become more important and respected by others. The Stoic Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius once wisely expressed, no one can harm you without your consent. Don't let others define or control you. This powerful quote is a reminder that ultimately, we are the guardians of our inner peace and emotional well-being. In a world where others' opinions, criticisms and judgments can be omnipresent, it's essential to understand that we have the power to choose how they affect us. Stoicism teaches us to cultivate the virtue of selective indifference, meaning we must learn to discern what deserves our attention and time, and what does not. We should not let others' opinions define our worth, nor should we be prisoners of external circumstances. By applying this principle in our lives, we can learn to face constructive criticism with humility, and ignore unfounded critiques that do not contribute to our growth. We can stop being victims of others' approval, and take control of our own narrative. No one can harm you without your consent, reminds us that we are the masters of our minds and emotions. It's a call to self-reflection and authenticity, to the authenticity of being who we are without fear of external judgment. When we internalize this stoic principle, we become masters of our own destiny, and our self-esteem and self-respect flourish. This culminates in making you more valuable and important to others. So as we face challenges and criticisms in our lives, let's remember this powerful truth from Marcus Aurelius. No one can harm you without your consent. Seize that power, maintain your integrity, and move forward with confidence on the path of authenticity and self-discovery. It's not about being selfish, but about staying true to your values and goals. People who respect you will be those who support your efforts and don't try to change you. When you don't make others the center of your life, you build healthy relationships based on mutual respect. You'll be valued for being authentic and being yourself. The last point in this video is advice that might surprise you. Stop initiating a conversation. In a world where constant communication is the norm, this may seem challenging, but it has its roots in Stoic wisdom. Stoics, such as Epictetus, reminded us of the importance of listening more than speaking. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason, to listen twice as much as we speak. Allowing others to initiate the conversation lets you learn more about them and about yourself. When you're always ready to talk, you might appear eager and sometimes self-centered, which often pushes people away. 
patience and a willingness to listen are qualities that attract others, because as social beings, we value good communication and being heard. Stoics also taught us to control our desire for external approval. You don't need to constantly prove your worth through words. Let your character and actions speak for themselves. Allowing others to initiate the conversation shows that you value their thoughts and opinions, fostering stronger relationships. People tend to remember how you made them feel, not what you said. In a world where many struggle to stand out, being someone who listens and values others will make you more appreciated and respected. So, to be more valued by others, consider stopping the initiation of conversations. Practice patience, active listening, and allow others to. In summary, the advice shared in this video is just the beginning of your journey towards being more valued by others. Stoicism provides a solid guide for building more authentic and meaningful relationships. Practice these tips and observe how your relationships and overall life begin to transform. You'll be amazed at the difference you can make by applying Stoic wisdom. Remember, the journey to being more valued involves creating a balance between your needs and relationships. Stoicism emphasizes finding value within yourself and not depending on constant recognition from others. Applying Stoic principles in your daily life, such as creating a fear of loss, practicing patience, avoiding constant availability, maintaining a bit of mystery, allowing others to invest in you, prioritizing your needs, cultivating independence, not making others the center of your life, and letting others initiate conversations aligns with building genuine and high-value relationships. Ultimately, the people around you define who you are as a person. As the saying goes, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. If you are not a priority to them, it indicates that these people may not have a genuine and authentic interest in you. In this ancient philosophy, we find principles to strike a balance between our needs and relationships. The essence lies in being valuable without being needy. To gain priority in the lives of others, or to know if these people have a genuine interest in you, it's not about strategy or manipulation tricks, but a wiser and authentic approach to building real and high-value relationships. Ultimately, the people around you define who you are as a person. As the saying goes, show me your friends, and I'll show you who you are. If you are not a priority to them, it indicates that these people may not have a genuine and authentic interest in you. In this ancient philosophy, we find principles to strike a balance between our needs and relationships. The essence lies in being valuable without being needy. In conclusion, applying these stoic principles can significantly impact how others perceive and value you. It's about fostering authentic connections and building relationships based on mutual respect, integrity, and shared values. By practicing these principles, you can navigate the complexities of modern life staying true to yourself and creating meaningful connections with those who genuinely appreciate and respect you. As you embark on this journey, remember that the true essence of Stoicism lies not only in how it transforms your relationships with others, but more importantly, in how it transforms your relationship with yourself. I sincerely hope that this message has been useful to you. I want to congratulate you greatly for having come this far and for having finished the video that means that you want to improve as a person. If you liked the video, leave your comment. You don't know what to comment. Comment, I dare, so I know you made it to the end. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and join us. Thank you for your attention until next time, warrior. Today, we are gonna go over the top five college degrees that are actually worth it for you to spend years and years of your life and thousands and thousands of dollars so that one day you can actually get that piece of paper that will make your life worth living and won't be a giant waste of your time that you just hang up on your wall and then never look at again. Now this is a very controversial topic and if you ask your family, most of them are probably going to tell you that you have to go to college because back when they were young, that was the key to success and they have your best interests in mind. And I mean, can you really blame them? College has been a part of the American dream for decades. But if you look on YouTube or honestly a lot of different places on the internet, most creators are gonna tell you that college is pretty much not worth it. 
Now, we've all heard the stories about the successful college dropouts turned billionaires and how they would have been even more successful even faster if they never went to college. And while there may be some truth to this, I do think that this is a little bit misleading. Take Mark Zuckerberg for an example. So if Mark Zuckerberg never went to Harvard, he probably would have never been able to start Facebook. So Facebook started off as a site that only college students could join. You needed an email that ended in .edu that you could only get if you went to college. Plus, let's be realistic here. Not everyone can be a billionaire. And honestly, do you even want to be a billionaire? I mean, these guys work like 120 hours a week. Like work is all they think about. They're just totally focused on work. They're basically robots that just work all the time. A study by the journal Nature Human Behavior showed that basically your happiness doesn't really increase above, depending on what metrics you use, seventy-five to ninety-five thousand dollars a year. But the truth is, is that many majors today are just complete scams, and you will probably never be able to get to that seventy-five to ninety-five thousand dollar a year mark. And even if it's your passion in life, you would probably be better off just studying it on your own without ever going to college. And there are countless examples out there of people who end up going six figures into debt and they can't even find a job. And if you don't believe me, then go ahead and take a trip to your local Starbucks and just ask them what degree they have. And I'm not trying to sh** on baristas, honestly. Like, I've actually talked with many of them, and they're smarter and more educated than I am by a long shot, but they still work as baristas and they make pretty much minimum wage. Because the truth is, only about 25 to 27 percent of college majors have a job that is actually related to the major that they spent years of their life in order to get. But if you are really smart and you do your research, you can choose a major that is going to be something that is extremely in demand and it's going to set you up for your whole life. Even if later on you decide to pivot to something else, you will always know that you have a job that you can get in no time. And the majors that I'm going to focus on now are ones that are great right now, and they're also going to be great for many, many years in the future. And if you're trying to figure out what to do with your life right now, like, I don't blame you. I was in your position at one point, and if you really pay attention and watch this video, you're going to have a really good idea of what direction that you should go. And the reason that I'm making this video is because I honestly wish a few years back that I had someone just like me to tell me the truth. Just give it to me the way that it actually is. Tell me the hard truth and it would have saved me a lot of time. Now, number five on this list is going to be engineering. And this might come as a huge surprise to a lot of you because you probably thought that this was going to be number one. So what exactly do engineers do? Well, if you look on Google, the official definition is someone who applies the principles of science and mathematics to develop economical solutions to technical problems. Okay, so that was a lot of words, so let me try to kind of simplify this for you. Engineers are basically the middlemen between science and the real world. They have to have a really good understanding of the science behind why things work, and then they basically apply that to the real world in a cost-effective and efficient way. Now, a few examples of uh, engineering degrees that make the most money are gonna be obviously petroleum engineering, and then any type of engineering degree that involves software, coding, or technology. Now, some of the cons of being an engineer, it's very, very difficult. Probably one of the hardest majors that you can do. It's heavily uh, science and math based. So you have to be very, very good at math and science. And then another thing, and this could be probably a good or a bad thing, is that it's always changing and you have to basically be able to keep up with the latest developments and technology. So the pros of being an engineer is that it's very difficult. And what does that mean? It means that not a lot of people can do it. And so there's a huge barrier to entry uh, for others who want to try to get into engineering. For this reason, engineering will never become fully saturated and you'll pretty much have a job for the rest of your life. Now another pro is, of course, I already mentioned it, it pays very, very well. Not all of the engineering degrees pay six figures right off the bat. 
but pretty much all of them, you can easily work your way up to six figures. It'll just take a few years. Now, another pro is that there is a lot of room for growth and you can always evolve and expand in your career. If you want to take on more of a management position, you know, you want to be like a project manager, you can go in that direction. Or if you think there's like an evolving technology that you uh, have a lot of passion for or you think there's a lot of opportunity there, you can specialize in that and go in that direction. So number four on the list is going to be human resource management. And this is another great career that anybody can get into because just about every company on the earth needs people that have these skills. So the definition of human resource management is pretty complicated, honestly, but it's basically just how a company manages the people who work inside of the company so they can get the most out of them, you know, the most efficiency without, you know, getting sued or something like that. Hey, send me that link to the monkey sex video. In more and more companies are realizing that it's 